Hey guys, I'm John. And I'm Joe. And we're Architect. Uh, we're the guys that do the crazy lightning. But that's a long story and we're not going to be doing that today. Today we're going to be showing you a piece of software that we designed to help us write music and hopefully it'll help you write music too. Do you want to explain it, Joe? Yeah, so what we've written here is a web application and you can access it for free at our website at stringtheory.architect.com with your web browser on your laptop or your phone. And what the program actually is, is it's a chord and scale book that's organized by Harmony. So the program has a bunch of scales entered into it and it's able to solve which chords are most relevant to any particular key and scale. And it can take that information and display it onto an instrument uh, output display of your choice. We have several options programmed in and we'll uh, get more into it in just a second. Now we made a little video to explain the, the software more in depth. The first part of the video is about the music theory behind it. The second part of the video is actually how to use the software. And the last bit of the video is a song that we wrote using the software as kind of a practical example of what to do with it. Now, if you don't want to watch any specific segment, uh, or if you don't want to watch the whole thing, we are going to have timestamps below that you can click on so you can pick what section you do want to watch. So thank you guys, and we'll see you back in just a second. The main purpose of this program is to solve which chords can be found on a particular scale. So let's go over how that's done with a couple of examples. The first thing that we're going to do is write out the chromatic scale. This scale is made up of 12 notes that are half-step intervals. The half-step is the smallest interval in Western music. Here we're writing out their actual note names in stepwise order. And you can see we're repeating the scale twice so that our template can slide into the next octave. In this example, I used a strip of paper and marked all of the note intervals that were not sharp or flat. The resulting strip gives us a template that we can slide over the chromatic scale and figure out which notes are in other major keys, but we'll get back to that in a moment. For now, let's go ahead and make a new list which will be just the C major scale notes. And we'll repeat a few notes to make sure our template works. Now we're going to figure out which chords we can play using C major scale notes. The way we do this is very simple. The major scale generates three different basic chord types, major, minor, and diminished. In order to help us solve the order of chords, I made some templates that will show us how to construct the chords from the chromatic scale. Let's go through some examples. A major chord is created by the first, fifth, and eighth chromatic scale intervals, though these intervals are more commonly referred to as the first, third, and fifth as they are found in the major scale. It creates a chord that sounds like this. A minor chord is created by the first, fourth, and eighth chromatic scale interval. The difference is that the second note is a half step lower. Therefore, these intervals are typically referred to as the first, flat third, and fifth, and it sounds like this. The third and final chord type that is constructed from the major scale is the diminished chord. It's created from the first, fourth, and seventh chromatic scale interval, so in comparison to a major chord, these intervals are referred to the first, flat third, and flat fifth, and it sounds like... Now we're going to use our chromatic chord templates to help us figure out which chords are naturally created by the C major scale. Over our major scale, we're going to use a new template that is marked at the first, third, and fifth scale interval. Keep in mind here that a major scale interval is not necessarily the same from one to the next, as opposed to chromatic scale intervals, which are always a half step apart. This is a pretty important point to remember in order to really understand what's going on here. This template will tell us which notes are in any major scale chord. We will start in the first position, which is C. The notes in the first chord are C, E, and G. So now we'll try to match those notes to the appropriate chromatic chord template. And surprise, it's a major chord. Let's slide it over and look at the next position. Our next chord is made of the notes D, F, and A. But when we slide the major chord template to the D position, you can see it's not a major chord because the second note is a half step lower. This means it's a minor chord, but let's double check with the minor chord template. And it's a match.
Now we'll repeat this process and write down the chord types as we solve them. What we end up with is a pattern of chords that's true for every major scale, no matter which key. The final pattern ends up being C major, D minor, E minor, F major, G major, A minor, and B diminished. Let's go through one more example a little more quickly. This time we're going to solve which chords you can play in the key of A major. So let's take our major scale template and slide it to the A position. We will copy the matching notes to a new scale under our C major scale. From here we can simply copy the order of chords that we previously solved because it's always the same. The resulting chords are A major, B minor, C sharp minor, D major, E major, F sharp minor, and G sharp diminished. One final step, just to prove that the pattern holds true, we'll go ahead and check the C-sharp position against the chromatic minor chord template. The notes we should expect to see are C-sharp, E, and G-sharp. And it looks good to me. All right, I uh, know there's a lot of information, but it really helps knowing that to understand how the software works. And uh, I think just gonna take it away now and we're gonna show you how to actually use the software. Okay, so let's start at the top of the form. Uh, we have our controls up here. Like these are the main things that you're gonna wanna change to change the view of the program. So the first option we have is the scale. And so there's two things you can do. You can either click on the text and it brings down the drop down window, or you can click on the spin arrows to just spin through uh, the options. And we have many different scales programmed in. The next option we have are the modes of the scale. And for most of the scales, we have the mode names programmed in. For some scales, we just numbered them because we didn't know what they were called. And then our final option is relatives of, and for all intents and purposes, this is the key that you're in. But it's a little bit more complicated than that. And we'll get into that in a minute when we talk more about modes. So the next thing that we have going on here is we have our scale and chord display box. And when you select your scale and your key, it labels all the buttons with their appropriate note names. And then the bottom set of buttons is the appropriate chord names for the chord that is generated from that scale position. So if you click on one of these top buttons, for example, if you click this green C button, it's going to go ahead and play a C note, and then it's gonna isolate that note on the instrument display. And you can see on the piano there, it just illuminates that one position momentarily. So yeah, let's talk about the colors here for a second. So the way that we did this basically is we needed an easy way to show which note uh, you were playing in the instrument display. So we went ahead and we came up with seven distinct colors for the seven different scale degrees for whatever scale you're in. And so if you look at the piano and you see a green dot, you know that's a C. If you see an aqua dot, you know that's a, a D. And if you see a blue dot, you know it's an E, et cetera, et cetera. And when you change your scale, uh, the colors stay the same, but the intervals change. So you can see that, but it's a way just to keep things in perspective and to understand what notes you should be playing with and what notes you shouldn't be playing with. And you should kind of think of them as numbers, I guess. Now underneath the chord and scale box here, we have our little audio panel and it has a few other options in it. The main things that you should probably pay attention to is first the play scale button. And if you hit this button, it, it just plays stepwise through the scale notes. And then you have this octave control. So say that you want to shift it to the octave that you're playing with. If it's a bass guitar or whatever, you can turn it down. And, and that's basically it right there. You have a volume control and you know, you, you have a million different ways you can change the volume on a computer, but this is one of them, we just put an option there. So let's go ahead and talk about the chords a little bit more. So the chords do something pretty interesting here. So when you push one of these chord buttons, it shows you which notes on the piano keyboard uh, composes the chord that you wanna hear. So if you click that button, 
this is a C major chord, and you can see that there's a green dot on the C, and then there's a blue dot on the E, and then there's a red dot on the G. And C, E, G make up a C major chord, and you can see basically everywhere on the piano where you can play a C major. And this is obviously the easiest example because C major is all white keys. So don't be fooled, it gets much more confusing when you change the different scales. So one thing that does behave a little differently here now, if we play the next chord in the scale, so if we're gonna go ahead and play D minor, it just goes ahead and it recolors everything. So now D is the green dot. And we did that just because you were, we're filtering out all the information except for the notes that are uh, relevant in the chord. So we did that by just making green is universally, it means one and blue is three and red is five. So you can just basically pick any any chord uh, from the chord buttons and it's just going to recolor the root note as green, then it'll recolor the third is blue and the fifth is red. Let's go ahead and play through those chords one at a time so they can get an idea of how this program functions here. So that pretty much sums that up. Uh, the next thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna show you how to change instruments. So far we've just been in piano mode, but we have many other instruments that we can pick from. If you click on the drop down, see we can either pick guitar or if we got drop D guitar, bass, mandolin, ukulele, violin. And we're gonna go ahead and select guitar because that's the only instrument that we actually know how to play. So it seems like the appropriate choice. So we've switched to guitar mode here, and what you're saying is all the C major scale notes uh, plotted on the guitar fretboard. The bottom string is your low E string, and the top string is your high E string. And it's just the same as the piano, basically. It's just a little bit more confusing because there's just so many ways to play a particular note on a guitar. And it's just showing you every position where you can find these notes on the fretboard. But to simplify things a little bit, we can go ahead and play the C major chord. So we're just going to go ahead and filter a bunch of this information out. And now what we're left with are all the positions on the guitar fretboard where C major uh, chord notes are located. So all you guys that play the guitar, you probably recognize at least this first form. This is the C major open form right here. But now we can move it up to the third fret and we have the A major form of the C major chord and then we can move it up to the uh, eighth fret right here. And we have the e, e major form. And then, you know, if we take it up to the, the 12th fret there, you have that D form. Yeah, that's close enough. So, and this uh, will change, obviously, if we want to look at a different chord in the scale. So let's go ahead and click on that D minor seventh right there. So you see at the, uh, at the first fret right there, we have a D minor open chord, and then we have the, at the fifth fret, the A minor form bar chord that also makes a D minor, and then we have at the tenth fret the E minor form bar chord. And you know, you can always like isolate different parts to uh, just grab a few strings or grab a few notes to uh, play the chord that you're trying to play. Another thing that you can do here is you can just look at all the chord notes in order and you can figure out how to play arpeggios and stuff like that and kind of just use your best judgment on where to put your fingers. That's one thing that this view, it doesn't actually show you where you, uh, where you should put your fingers. It just kind of tells you where you could put your fingers and you really have to just use your best judgment to decide uh, the most uh, efficient way to do it. But it does show you that you have uh, a lot of a lot of options and I think that is pretty cool. So I think that pretty much sums up the chord mode. Let's go back to the scale view for a second and let's just talk about the scale and the modes for a second. And I'm sure if you guys play with this program a lot, you're going to figure out ways to use it that I didn't think of. But it seems like the more I stare at this, uh, the more things start to pop out. But the most basic thing that you can do is, you know, use this view to figure out how to play a scale. And I know it looks kind of overwhelming, 
but it's not actually very hard. So right now we're seeing the C major scale and uh, let's just say that we want to play the C major scale and we want to do it in a fashion that's conducive to economy picking. So we're going to do uh, three notes per string. So starting up at that uh, eighth fret, you see that green dot right there. So just go ahead and play the first three notes that you see. So that would be the green, cyan, blue. And now you see after that, uh, we want to switch to the next string because we just played three notes, but we see on the low E string that the next note would be magenta. So let's just go ahead and find that magenta note on the next string. And then we have F, G, A. Right. Now the next note we want is yellow, but we want to switch strings. So, right. So now we're on cyan, and we know the next note we want is blue, but we want to switch to the next string. So let's just go there. Now we want orange. Now we want cyan. And it's pretty cool because, you know, if you get lost on the scale, you can just look up and be like, Cyan, oh, what did I just do? I just played D, E, F. So that's how you uh, figure out how to play scale. So let's talk about modes for a second. Uh, the easiest way, I think, to think of how this program deals with modes is that a mode is just a different way that you can play the notes in a scale to kind of make a different sound and it's pretty easy. So the first mode of a scale of the C major scale is Ionian. It's also just called the C major scale and it's from C to C. If you play the notes in order, it makes a sound that sounds like the major scale. But if you switch to the next mode, uh, which is D Dorian, all it does is it shifts the uh, note position. So now you see that D is our first note. So Dorian is just D to D, but it's all the same notes that are in the C major scale. And so every time you switch modes, uh, this is especially where the, the spin wheel here is uh, helpful because you can see that as you s slide through them real quickly, like the actual dots stay in the same place and all that happens is the colors change. Right? And so that's just showing you basically that your start and stop position is changing. And so that's where we get to the relatives of. That's why it says relatives of and not key, because if you want to play D Dorian, you have to have uh, the relatives of set to the root note of the scale. So if you want to play D Dorian, you need to be set to uh, C Ionian in order to get to that. And if you play around with it a little bit, you'll figure out that's uh, it's not too hard to do. Right, now that you know how the software works, uh, I'm going to go ahead and switch it back to guitar. I'm sorry, I'm going to switch it back to piano and play around with some of the scale settings to show you how this all works. So let's uh, go through and pick a good scale. What's a good scale, Joe? Mm, I would go with harmonic minor. Harmonic minor, all right. So we pick harmonic minor. And you see how the intervals uh, change to make the different scales. So we'll go here and hit play scale. <laughs> Very pretty sounding. And then you go through, play some different chords in it. That's pretty neat. Let's switch to uh, harmonic major. Scale there. So yeah, there's a lot of options here you can play around with, and the more you use it, the more you're going to figure out the best way for you to use it. Let's go switch back to, uh, yeah, let's keep it on harmonic liner. Uh, the last thing we want to talk about is down here on the bottom, and we have our, our metronome. So here is the interface here. We have our start BPM, our end BPM, and the time it takes to increase and how much we want it to increase by. Right now I'm setting the start BPM at 50 beats per minute, the end BPM at 200 beats per minute, a time of five seconds and an increment of 10 BPM. Now in real life you would wanna have different settings than this. You would wanna have this time a lot higher, usually a little bit longer than whatever phrase you're trying to practice. And you probably wouldn't have the uh, 
the increment set so high, but just to show you how the software works, let's hit go. You see it plays for five seconds at 50 BPM, then it switches to 60 BPM, 70 BPM, and it gradually gets faster and faster and faster until eventually it gets to 200 BPM. And you get the idea here. All right, guys, thanks for watching. If you have any uh, questions, comments, or suggestions, we are going to be updating the software pretty often, so feel free to email us or uh, write a comment below. If you like the software, feel free to use it for your lessons, or if you know anyone else that might be interested in the software, please share it with them too. So the last thing that we're going to do for you guys is we wrote a little composition in A harmonic minor, so it's just a little example of what you can do with the chords that you get from the display in this program. Joining us in this one is our friend William Jerome on the keyboard, and I hope you guys like it. Thanks, guys. Mm -hmm.